Class A felons who are on lockdown for 23 hours are allowed to do an experiment where they now have open door access to their unit for 24 hours. Oh, and without correctional officers. What could possibly go wrong? Shit a lot. Hey, what's up and hello, this is the Chris Nicole giving you my views on life, love, and the world of entertainment through my eyes. And this is my review on Unlocked, a jail experiment, season one, episode one, Shanks and Shakedowns. So I saw this on my Netflix recommendation page and I ignored it because I was just like, here we go with another jail documentary. But crew member Teeth said, no, Chris, I think you need to watch this. This seems like a pretty good show. And I said, okay, let me watch the first episode. And it's quite interesting. Ratchet, but interesting. So we start off with an explanation as to why they're doing this show. They talk about the issues going on in the United States prison system, how the correctional officers are outnumbered by the prisoners, and because of the violence increasing in the prisons, most inmates are locked down for 23 hours a day and they only get one hour out. Mind you, of course, their cells are like the size of a closet and they're in there typically with another person. All right, so they feel that's the only way they can control these prisoners is to just only give them one hour of free time. But because they're in their cells for 23 hours a day, that creates tension. It creates a lack of mental stability. Mind you, some of them already had a lack of mental stability. So by the time they get out for that one hour, a lot of them start fighting, they start arguments, and then the next thing you know, an episode of Oz comes on, and while they're supposed to get one hour of free time, if someone starts to fight or they're not obeying the rules, that one hour gets cut and they're back in their cells for another 23 hours. So you could potentially only be out for 15 minutes, a fight breaks out, and then you're back in your cell. Sheriff Higgins, who runs the prison in Little Rock, Arkansas, decides to do an experiment on his H unit that gives them full access to their unit without correctional officers. So what does that mean? The cell doors are open 24 hours a day and there's no authority in the unit. Mind you, Everyone in this unit has the worst of the worst felons, all the way down to recreational use and robberies, all right? You have class A felons who have been in prison since they were teenagers. Some of them are teenagers in that unit, but they have been pretty much in and out of jail their whole entire lives. Now, does this program last for a day? No. Does it last for a week? Uh uh. They want to do this program for six weeks, a month and a half. Whoever made this show is a genius or insane because this could definitely lead to something else. Our first inmate we meet is Tiny, and I'll call him Mr. Poker aka shank man he talks about how he's a little guy he's always been little he's only five three and he talks about a story when he was eight years old he wanted to play with the big kids and one of the big kids said no you're too little so one of the kids threw a football at tiny's head and he said at that point no one was gonna punk him bully him and does he decide to fight him 
with his fist? Uh Uh-uh. He said he started poking him. And I know y'all know what I mean when I say by poking him. And he said he watched him squirt out. And he said ever since then, he's been poking fools ever since. Yeah. Yeah. The H unit. He is in there for aggravated robbery and first degree battery. Then we meet Eastside and his eyes scare the hell out of me. But he is the tattoo guy in the unit. He is in there on depossession and steal. And this fool said when he was 19 years old, he robbed a pet store. But we find out he was getting high, so that explains it. But let me tell y'all something. The story he told about how he stole a bunch of snakes and an iguana, y'all, let's just say that it was in God's will for him to get caught. Y'all listen to that story. I was mind blown to hear what the heck he said. We knew he had to be high going in there to steal a bunch of snakes and an iguana. He said he's been using that hard M since he was eight years old. Eight years old. Mind blown by that. I don't think I've ever heard someone using something that hard hard that early so yeah he's pretty much buying his time until i guess they transfer him to prison okay because this is a detention center this is where people go before they're actually transferred to their prison to do the remainder of their time they do a shakedown before the experiment begins thinking that will stop contraband coming in the jail (laughs) okay Then we meet Randy. He's considered an OG in the H unit. He's 46. They call him True Story. And if you watch the episode, you will know why they call him that. He is there for DA and possession. He is the helper in the jail. He claims he hates confrontation. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So after he says that he hates confrontation we meet tyler and he seems to be the rebel without a cause tyler picks over someone's leftover food on a tray and the co says for health reasons the inmates are not allowed to do that but tyler does it and the co tells tyler don't do that anymore like don't do it And Tyler starts dropping F-bombs and what the F does it matter if I eat someone's leftovers? Screw you. And the CO is an older black woman. And she's like, don't you ever disrespect me. If you disrespect me, it's going to be a problem. And then he calls her a sorry bitch. Now, Randy is black. Again, the CEO is an older black lady. Tyler is white. My gut tells me that Randy saw this as disrespect even more because she is an older black woman who is probably around his mother's age. So, Mr. I don't like confrontation goes to Tyler Sell and says, don't you ever disrespect her again, pretty much giving him a warning that if he does, it's going to be a problem. Sheriff Higgins tells the H unit about the experiment. No locked cells, no COs, and you have to be responsible adults with no contraband and work together to make this a safe, productive environment. Sir, if they were responsible adults, they wouldn't be in jail. We meet Willie Lovelace. I'll call him AKA Poet because he reminds me of Poet from Oz. Locks and all. He said, look, that's great that you opened up the doors, but I don't want to be pacified. Y'all want to make me feel comfortable and complacent, but I want you to create programs that's going to help me get out of here. I can get a job, be with my family, and I don't have to come back. And the sheriff says, well, that's what I'm trying to do with this experiment. And I was like, how in the hell would this experiment help them? That's what I thought at first. But then when I started to really rethink it, I said, you know what? I can see his point. Because if you can't handle the little freedom that he gives you in there, how can you handle the free world? So, 
okay, I see you, Sheriff Higgins. Randy is the self-proclaimed pod boss. And he wants the older heads to come together to bring some authority since there won't be any COs in the unit. And clearly no one in there likes authority. So immediately people are like, who the hell does Randy think he is? Especially the younger guys because baby, they thought our generation was bad. This generation don't give a hook at all whatsoever. And Randy is so happy. He's like, I am the vibe boss all day, every day. Okay, Mr. Vibe Boss. Mr. Vibe Boss is actually an enforcer and he is really cool with Tyler's cellmate. And he talks to Tyler's cellmate and when the sales close, Tyler's cellmate whoops his ass for being disrespectful. Tyler is busted up and he has to go to medical And of course, he says that he fell off his bed because there's no snitching in jail. And Randy says, I did that. I believe in karma. And I'm like, yeah, I believe in karma too, but not when you're creating the karma, sir. Now, mind you, this is before the experiment begins. The sheriff just told them about the experiment. The experiment hasn't even started yet. But then the day finally comes. And the experiment begins. And these inmates are hype. They are screaming, saying, get the heck up out of here, banging on the doors. Some of them are shaking their heads like, this ain't going to work. What are they doing? And Mr. Poker, a.k.a. Tiny, is like, man, y'all got me thinking I need to get a poker up in this mofo. Child, all I got to say is, Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> this is about to be interesting. You are pretty much giving these human beings who have never had authority, never had any respect for the law, never had any structure, freedom in the jail. Yeah. So with that being said, that was the end of episode one. I'm going to give this episode a solid A. Kept me intrigued. Please watch this show. And for those who have watched the show, what did you think about episode one? Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on my next video. Toodles.